It's no secret that Samsung is working on a 200 megapixel camera for the upcoming S23 lineup. But a higher megapixel doesn't always mean a better photo. In fact, the size of the pixels means much, much more. So how does it work? Well, it works by using pixel binning, and this isn't anything new. The S22 Ultra is a perfect example. On the S22 Ultra, the main camera is 108 megapixels, but you may have noticed that anytime you take a photo using the phone, if you look at the metadata, you'll see that it is 3000 by 4000. 3 times 4 is 12, so that photo is 12 megapixels. But if you go into the dedicated 108 megapixel mode and take a photo, that metadata will show 9000 by 12000. 9 times 12 is 108, so that photo is 108 megapixels. In the example of the 12 megapixel photo captured from the S22 Ultra, it did actually use the 108 megapixel camera, but it combined 9 pixels into 1. 108 divided by 9 equals 12. 12 megapixels. So what's the point of pixel binning? Why can't Samsung just leave it at 108 megapixels, make that the only mode? Well, as I said in the beginning of the video, pixel size matters much more than just having a gazillion megapixels. In order to capture more light and reduce digital noise, pixel binning takes a group of pixels and combines them into one. So what is digital noise? Well, this is digital noise, and it doesn't look good for photos or for video, which is why pixel binning is a good thing. By the way, if you learned something new or you are enjoying today's video, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up. For every thumbs up I get, I will order a slice of pizza. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just really hungry. Using the 108 megapixel mode in good lighting does create a sharper looking photo, but in low light, the 108 megapixel kind of falls apart because it's not using pixel binning, therefore each pixel is getting less light. So how does this apply to the S23 and the 200 megapixel camera? Here's where it gets a little technical, but don't worry, I'll try to keep it simple because I hate technicalities, okay? So here we go. If the S23 Ultra is going to be using the ISOCELL HP1, the 200 megapixel sensor will have a pixel size of 0.64 microns, which is like really tiny. But thanks to pixel binning, to achieve a 12 and a half megapixel photo from that 200 megapixels, you need to combine 16 pixels into one. 200 divided by 16 is 12.5, so 12.5 megapixels. Since pixel binning creates a larger overall pixel, that 0.64 turns into 2.56. So 2.56 microns at 12 and a half megapixels, which is bigger than any other phone out on the market. And if you pair that up with Samsung's insane processing such as night mode and AI, well, I suspect that it should be the best performer when it comes to low light, as long as Samsung doesn't do anything weird with the contrast boost like the iPhones have, which is super annoying, but that's a different video. Another good thing about the HP One sensor is that it'll be able to do 4K at 120. Now, that's nothing new because the OnePlus 10 Pro already does that as, along with the Xperia, oh boy, what is it? The Xperia 410, Pro i Mark 10, whatever it's called, I'll put it here. This phone, I'm pretty sure I butchered the name like really bad, but this phone also does 4K 120. But that's not it. 8K video recording is also getting an improvement. So right now the S22 Ultra is capable of doing 8K video at 24 frames per second. The HP One sensor should increase it to 8K 30. Whether Samsung actually unlocks that feature, we don't know yet, only time will tell. More fantastic news for the S23 line of phones is Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Not only is Snapdragon suspected to overtake Apple's chips by 2025, but Samsung is also ditching Exynos, reportedly. If rumors are correct, the S23 and S24 will all be rocking Snapdragon chips worldwide. This is awesome news for you guys that are living in that part of the world where Exynos is being sold because a lot of people were having problems with Exynos, but now they're not, but then some are, but then an update breaks the battery life, then another update breaks something else. And dude, I don't know what Samsung is doing with uh, Exynos, but um, clearly they should just leave it up to Snapdragon, Qualcomm, l let, them, let, let them have it, you know, <laughs> just make, make it Snapdragon all over the world. That's it, that's all I'm asking. What do you guys think about Samsung using Snapdragon worldwide? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know down below. And in the off chance Samsung sees this video and they read the comments, then they'll know your perspective on it. So 
comment right now. Do it. Pause the video. Go ahead. I'll wait. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave a like. And if you are new here and you like these types of videos along with reviews and no BS talks, then subscribe. This was Mark from Mark's Tech. Adios.